Our speaker is Mr. Biswa Priya Bhattacharji, the Group Business Director at IMRB International. Biswa Priya leads the technology research practice team at IMRB and over the last 12 years at IMRB, Biswa Priya and his team have successfully anchored several industry research studies in the area of technology, including studies on IT market, hardware market, excuse me, electronic component market, cloud services, digital and online, and many more. In addition, he has also led several research studies on determining the impact of technology across areas like education, healthcare, lifestyle and entertainment, community and business delivery. He regularly advises leading IT organizations in addressing their marketing goals and also partners them in converting the market research findings into business insights and a strategic plan. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Pantajarji. Hello everyone, am I audible? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, what I would uh, speak about today is the pockets of potential. Uh, we, as a community, have always been looking at trying to figure out where is the next set of opportunities that's going to come for us. Right? Uh, who are the next set of businesses who are going to invest in online? Right. Where is the next level of set of websites going to come from? That's what we are going to look at today. One of the huge areas of opportunities that we have in our country, which is not well exploited yet, is the small and medium businesses. And therefore, that is the segment that one needs to look at. What we are going to talk about is findings of a research assignment that we undertook uh, a couple of months back and uh, I'll give you a quick context of the assignment that we did. From a research standpoint, we looked at determining who are these businesses who are present online and who would like to be present online. We spoke to more close to about 1,000 businesses, 1,000 small and medium businesses across the country, urban, uh, across the entire of urban India, which gives us, gave us a very good perspective of these segments. Uh, we looked at what we define as micro, 1 to 10 employee organizations. We looked at small, 11 to 100 employees, and also the medium segment, 100 to 500 employees. Sorry. When we spoke to these organizations, we got certain basic understanding of these organizations. We met business, business owners and also IT decision makers. 64% of these businesses, the IT decision is taken by the owner rather than a, an IT decision maker being there. Uh, we saw that most of them had their clients in India and many of them also had clients which are locally present in, in their city itself or in a very close geographical proximity. About 64% though spoke about the fact that IT is extremely critical for them. Without IT, their business doesn't run. And about eight, on an average, the businesses were about eight years old. So, when we look at these businesses, one of the things is to look at the size of the business and get that in, in, in context as well. If you look at urban India, there are close to about 10.2 million targetable organizations. When I say targetable organizations, what I mean are these organizations have some kind of an IT attitude or an IT practice or at least have certain level of maturity that would enable them to start adopting technology in their business if they do not adopt one today. Right? About 10 million of these are MSMEs, which is less than 500 employee organizations. And about 5.29 million of them have a PC today. 
at least some level of IT penetration. The rest of them do not have IT penetrated as yet. And about 1.35 million of them have a website. So basically what we are saying is that 14% of the MSMEs in the country today have a website. And that's currently a very low penetration of websites. A huge upside for all of us to tap into. The question really is that how do we do that? Let's understand how this 14 million breaks up by some of the key verticals. If you look at from a verticals perspective, uh, and please keep in mind we are talking about MSMEs and therefore BFSI will not have banks in them but would have more of financial organizations, right? There the penetration is about 35%. So there is only about one third of BFSIs that have <coughs> sorry, uh, a website today. Education about 24%, travel, trade, logistics about 17, technology 17, manufacturing 14, retail 10, real estate 10, healthcare 10. Right? So if you look at there are certain verticals which seem to have have taken a lead in terms of IT adoption. But there are a large majority of the verticals which have currently not adopted technology <coughs> or sorry, not adopted a website as yet. This is what is the scenario today. Right, let's superimpose this on how do we, do they see their adoption of websites going forward. Now, if you look at this and if you look at the x-axis, which is the lower axis. This talks about what is the current adoption today, the, the data that we saw in the earlier slide. And the y-axis talks about what is their intention. And the size of the bubble talks about the size of the business opportunity that we have. Now, if you look at this, this gives us very, a very interesting story. You would look at BFSI and education, which have high adoption today, but is also high on consideration. These are segments which seem to have crossed the level of chasm and therefore are ready to adopt websites in a much bigger way. An immediate opportunity for our, all of us to cash into. If you look at technology, manufacturing and retail, right? these are the next level of opportunities where the adoption may not be as high as that of the other verticals, However, when you look at it from the perspective of intention and the size of the opportunity, this is a fairly large opportunity for us to look into. Therefore, if you were to look at prioritizing the top three or four amongst the eight verticals that I have shared with you, they seem to be BFSI, Education, Manufacturing, Technology, Retail, five of them. The question really is that if these are the five verticals that we need to look at. There are three verticals which have adopted and are in the form of, are in the, in the process of adopting going forward as well, which is education, BFSI and technology. And there are two segments which we look at as emerging segments, segments where the current penetration is not as high. However, when we look at the, the intention to adopt websites, and also the size of the universe. There seems to be a huge opportunity uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the manner in which they could adopt. One of the key things that we saw as we worked through this entire research was also that website is never looked at as one, as a singular most important way to get online. There are other ways as well. And primarily we looked at two other op options, <coughs> which is through a corporate mail ID, <coughs> sorry, or through social networking. Right. And what we looked at here was how does the interplay between a website and the other two really happens. If you look at in terms of the relevance, website seemed to be more relevant 
than any of the others, the social media, the directory listing and the corporate mail ID. And therefore, website does seem to make be, be a more, more relevant, a more important uh, part of the, the thought process of businesses when it comes to uh, how they look at having an online presence established. Also, more interestingly, you know, uh, of the businesses that are online, only about 33% of them have a website, which means that there are about 67% who have an online presence today. However, they do not have a, web a website. They understand what it is to be online. They understand the benefits of being online, but don't have a, uh, have a website today. Possibly one of the low-hanging foods for us to target. And if I were to break that segment up, that 67%, what I see very interestingly is retail, which heads it at about 56%, followed by travel trade logistics, healthcare technology, and manufacturing. Here I'd like to also mention that retail has grown in prominence, has grown in importance, and there are a lot of innovative solutions that are being worked out with respect to retail. One of the innovative solutions that I can talk about is what Now Floats is doing, and uh, that is around uh, getting a website up really quickly for the business. And once the website is up, the, the owner of the business can actually make changes to the website through an SMS using a short code. Right? So if they want to update some, some offers, if they want to make the website uh, the search optimized, better optimized, they can use a short code and they could actually make the changes. A very innovative solution for a small business, say retail. If you look at the manner in which uh, the, the adoption happens across segments, you would notice that there is, there are segments which seem to prefer one kind of online media over the other. So, for example, IT, ITS companies, manufacturing, look at online directory listings. Social media is something which is high on IT, ITS, BFSI, and education. Uh, while corporate ID is something which seems to be more prevalent at, across IT, ITS, BFSI, and education. And so, if you look at it, there are pockets where there are certain preferences uh, retail seem to prefer, for example, only directory listings where there is a relatively high adoption of uh, retail there. Given this, how do we actually take it forward? This is all fine, this is all information, but how do we actually take it from forward and Im implement this from a day-to-day -day perspective? Right. So what we looked at was each of these segments, what can we do and what do we need to keep in mind? What we saw, very interestingly, were for each of the segments, there were certain parameters, certain triggers and certain barriers which seemed to be common and running across all the three or four or five verticals that we spoke about. While there were certain parameters which seemed to be different and this, they seemed to be to stand out only for that particular vertical. For example, if you look at education, professional image and brand building seems to be top of mind of businesses. While parameters like acting as a catalog service came up specifically for this vertical. There are certain concerns or barriers as well which we need to keep in mind when we speak to education organizations. <coughs> specifically, the, the perception that education, a website is for larger organizations, is not really for us. That's a strong perception that seems to drive education organizations as is for many of the other organizations uh, as well that we would see. Also, they believe their customers are not tax savvy enough and therefore they would not go onto the website. These are things that we need to help them address as we move forward and speak to them. However, there are enough and more case studies around organizations and uh, education organizations being able to leverage a website very effectively. And, and we have seen many of them as we interacted with the small and medium businesses. From a BFSI perspective, brand building becomes more important. What they look at is, 
to understand which brand, what, how, how they can build a better brand because that is how build, it, that is what builds trust for, for the brand, which is what is very important when it comes to a BFSI. Uh, at the same time, they are looking at increasing sales and reach as well as, as they build trust. The, the concern really is the fact that they don't see customers, the reach of customers being the right way of reaching out, uh, and website being the right way of reaching out to their customers. Technology, professional image comes up, sales is important, while what is not important is the fact that their customers do not want and there is limited knowledge that these businesses have in creating a website or getting it created. Retail, the focus is on increasing sales, want to build a professional image. They are looking at expanding their business as well. Uh, while for them, they have other priorities and that what is something that is on top of their head when it comes to the retail segment. Manufacturing needs to have a professional image. They are looking at, from a brand building perspective, for them, one of the key concerns that stand out is that the maintenance of websites is extremely costly. They may possibly not know enough about how to manage a website and how to build it. Right. So, given this, we, we have got a broader understanding of what uh, people want and how do they want. The next thing is therefore, what kind of domain do they prefer, what TLDs. So we looked at the importance of a TLD and businesses spoke about the fact that almost over 60% of the businesses felt that it's an extremely important thing and they would like, need to ensure that they get the right one. They wouldn't want to be caught having the wrong deal. However, when you look at the awareness, dot-com seems to drive awareness significantly. 81% of them were able to recall dot-com on a spontaneous basis. When we looked at the preference as well, we saw that the preference was also driven by dot-com and the adoption was also increasingly driven by dot-coms. Given this, <coughs> there is a very strong uh, indicator that dot coms seem to be the most important and the most preferred option. Having said that, in some cases they have also mentioned about certain concerns of having a dot com. Most common mentioned concern is the fact that they do not get the, the right name of their business when it comes to dot com because many of them are exhausted. I understand there is a session that's happening, possibly as we speak, uh, a, a, a workshop uh, where uh, they're talking about dot coms and how the there are innovative ways in which dot coms the names could be could be they, they could come up with names. I suggest you could actually go and uh, participate and join that workshop to see what it, what is it that you can ex exactly find out about uh, dot coms. To close the session, I think uh, one thing that's very important is for us to know how do we go about finding these education organizations, what's the best way of finding the right BFSI organization and so on. One of the things that we did to help you is to create a list of industry associations. Reaching out to small and medium businesses becomes a lot easier if you go through the industry associations. And as a starter, we have created a list of about eight to nine industry associations for each of these, uh, these verticals that we have seen. That's available in booth D1, which is a very signed booth uh, where we have kept it and you could pick it up from there and uh, you could utilize it. Uh, so that's all that I, I had to sp speak about today. Uh, I'll uh, take a request. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you very much, Biswabria. We're going to, like you said, like you said, we're going to open up the floor to some questions. So please raise your hand. We have one right here. 
we have quite a bit of time for questions, which is great. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, a uh, lot of organizations uh, are keen to uh, make websites, but when we talk about them, MSME, uh, when we push uh, them to website, uh, they may get they may get a website created, but they are not interested in updating the website. That's the major problem that uh, we face today. Uh, what do you want to say about it? I completely agree that uh, one of the challenges. There are two challenges really from a MSME perspective that comes up. The first is uh, the fact that they are technologically not savvy enough to, able, to be able to make the changes on their own. The second is, in many cases, we have seen that they really do not know what to put in as well. Right, so once they update a co the content, changing the content is a big, big challenge oh, for them. So we are, giving, we are giving them a dynamic website so that they can uh, get the content changed also. But still, they are not uh, not updating the website. Even right. the, even when the we uh, uh, train them how to upload uh, the product and your product will be displayed here, and uh, they still don't update. Right. So there are two Is things. You know, when we spoke to these businesses who have a website, they said, "I don't know what to put in, and what do I?" So I know I have a dynamic website, but I don't know what should go into the website, or how do I? Ch why do I change that website? So they have a lack of content at their end. So once they have put in a content, they don't know what more they can put in or how different they can put in as a content that goes into that website. Therefore, it, be, it ends up being a static page. The other challenge that comes in is that these are small businesses largely managed. All of these are managed by the owner himself or herself. Given that, the owner is caught up in driving their own business, right? And therefore, there's very little time and energy that is devoted towards a website. Also, what we have seen is that the, the benefit of website is something, and that's one of the things that did come up very strongly. Uh, the benefit of website is not directly visible to the owner. So once the owner doesn't see what is the ROI, they do not look at this as an investment, but more as a cost. And once they have made that investment, that, that uh, the, the, the cost that they have put in, into that, they do not want to invest more of their time. They would much rather invest that into selling in a, in a different manner than selling it on the side, right? So somewhere possibly in the manner in which we train them, we would also need to talk about how they can measure ROI on the website and more importantly how they can sell better using their website. That is something which we have found to be lacking in many of the businesses that already has a website today. But sir, for online selling, we have to burn the money. I mean, there's a huge cost. So, I'm, I'm not talking about a selling from a perspective, an e-commerce perspective. I'm saying acquiring customers using the online website. Why do we create an online website? We create an online website for the business. As a business, I would create it so that I could promote my products and services and therefore get inquiries or get people to come into my store if that is a retail store or uh, at least send inquiries to me. If I have a way of measuring that, right, and it could be as basic as when a customer walks in, I could give the customer a form and ask them, how did you come to know about us? And website being one of the options, right? It, is, it could be as basic as that, which we have seen businesses not do. And therefore, they do not know when they have a new walk-in customer into a retail, for example, how and where did that person come to know about us? And therefore, they do not have a way in which they could measure the efficacy of our website. Sir, I, I, I mean, I put a solution for this also. I put uh, when the query form, uh, the, uh, when the query has gone from website, the subject address marks website from website. But I mean, the Indian customers are very, very dull and have no enthusiasm. It's very exactly. disheartening. Yeah, exactly. See, uh, there are two things. You know, means. One is what we have seen, at least during the process of not only the, this research, but even otherwise. Uh, and if you look at the normal uh, human tendency, especially in a B2C kind of a environment where most of the MSMEs operate in, there, there are a few B2B as well, but as we have seen, almost about 60% of the businesses are B2C. 
When you operate in a B2C environment, they usually don't send an inquiry over the, uh, over the website. It is more of a B2B phenomenon. Even in a B2B, there are only about 20% of businesses who actually send an inquiry over, a, over an email or through the website. Most of them would actually pick up the phone and leave a call. Right. At that point in time, the system that we have designed may actually not be relevant. What we need to therefore tell them is to design an <coughs> offline system possibly, which could capture this information at their end. Right. That could be a, a, a kind of a, a, a suggestion we could give them, which could help them capture where are the inquiries coming from. Because today, most businesses are clueless as to what is it that is coming from a website versus word of mouth versus others. Okay, actually, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but we definitely, maybe you can take that fruitful discussion offline so we can give a chance to someone else. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right back there, and there's one over here. Hello. We've got many SM, uh, MSMEs where we can actually don't have an awareness, why do they need a website? For the first time, we can actually explain them, why do they need a website? They get ready, they get a uh, website done for themselves. But it, on the time of renewal, after a year, they said that no, it wasn't beneficial for us. What to say at that point of time? Because bringing somebody on it for just a year doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, I think uh, the two questions are connected because unless you see a, a benefit of the website, I would not invest in it going forward. Because as an MSME, I would want to save the last penny. Yeah. Right. And therefore, it is a responsibility possibly amongst us as a community to also help them use the website more effectively. And as I said, ROI on the website is extremely critical. If you look at the parameters, various segments that we have seen have different parameters. For example, somebody has uh, branding in their mind while somebody has customer reach in their mind. For somebody who talks about customer reach, we need to give them a way in which they could measure customer reach, which need not be only website-led. We have to possibly give them suggestions that could go beyond the website. Kind of marketing and stuff. Yeah, it could be possibly marketing inputs. It could also be certain changes in their basic business processes, which could help them capture where is a query coming from at a very, very fundamental level. Right? Means even if you measure that. I'm, I'm not talking about you getting into an SEO or the SCM and therefore increasing the efficacy of the website. <clears throat> even at a very plain vanilla website, even which is static, let's not talk about, even about a dynamic website, a very state, static website, uh, at the end of the day, if there are visitors that are coming on there, right, how they can look at those numbers to see how many visitors have visited, how many have come in through what source. And if, if you can actually build us uh, help them build an uh, offline solution which captures where do their customers come from. I think that's the most important yeah. element that could help them know, at least know what has been the efficacy of the website. Today they don't know that. And that is why they don't renew. If they knew it, they would, would have renewed. If they knew, for example, it is giving me 100 customers in a year, for example, I would be happy to renew and put in that 5,000 rupees again in a, for the next year. Thank you very much for your question. Next question, I think some a gentleman has the Sir, mic already. To get the awareness, we have to go to Google because how to get awareness of our website? Sorry, sir, I didn't get your question. How to get awareness of our website? People will get awareness. To Google only, no? Mm -hmm. so is there any other way to get awareness from people other than Google? Because our website comes on first, ten, first, seven, first test of our Google. And only customer will come to us. Okay, so if I understand your question correctly, you are saying that as a, a customer of a website, they would first go on to Google and only then get an uh, understanding of the website. Well, uh, to an extent you are right. Uh, Google is obviously the mother of internet in a way today. However, I think what is important is Google or the internet does tell them what is the, what is a website, but it doesn't tell them what is the benefit that a website is going to give to his business. That is a role that a Google doesn't play today, right? And even if there are, and there are obviously a huge amount of texts that one can talk about that's available online, 
However, the challenge is the small business is not going to read through that. The small business owner is going to focus on his business and he is not going to spend time reading about something which is not related to his business. So possibly the onus of educating him is on us to meet him and talk about him, talk, talk to him about how you can actually get more from the website than what you are getting today and show case studies and examples of how businesses like him have been effectively been able to utilize this. What we have seen through our discussions with these businesses is that when it comes to case studies and if you can give the right set of case studies, most businesses have actually adopted websites very quickly. So I think that's, that's one of the things that really works with us. Okay, so we've got one minute left on the clock, so if someone has a really quick question right here, this, then we can uh, end on that note. Yeah, hello sir. Uh, I just like to know, is it, uh, should we push, uh, you know, uh, I mean, all these MSMEs uh, to, you know, make responsive sites or non-responsive sites? Uh, because yeah, being a designer and a coder, I have, uh, it has been pretty painful in uh, designing a customized website, whereas not responsive sites have some ready platforms. Uh, faster in making them, faster in deploying them, and they also come with a backend. So I just I was always confused whether I should promote a responsive site to you know these SMEs or should I promote a non-responsive site? Uh, one thing is people have a habit of checking sites on their mobiles a lot. That trend is really increasing. Yes. An SME would uh, you know one of the client in one of these small uh, let's say if my client is um, an SME, he will uh, you know should really see his site more on, first on his mobile phone than his PC. Right. So. I have always been confused there. I mean, as a designer and a developer, I know the pains of designing a website where you will again make some revisions and changes. Uh, so, but however, in the responsive side, I, I normally tell them that there's a certain standard layout. I mean, you know, when things, uh, when you look at, when you the look at the question, site. question, yeah. please, I'm sorry, so, we're out of time. So, in, uh, in the interest of time, because the time is up, I'll just tell you one thing, that at the end of the day, for an MSME, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the cost. He is, if you are going to give him an option which is going to be more expensive, he is not going to adopt that. He would look at the least possible cost, at least to start off with. So if you want to get an MSME to start off using a website, you need to give him a cost which is as low as possible. Get him to start utilizing, get him to start getting used to it, and then you can always scale him up. But don't try to scale him up in the first go, and thereby not get him into the uh, <coughs> into the internet or the, the the online bandwagon at all. Okay, thank you so much Mr. Thank Priya you. for sharing those um, pockets of potential with us for MSMEs.